exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him, He is exalted forever, exalted and high. The King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted and high. God of hope, you promised to make David's household great among the nations. Then you sent your son, Jesus, to transform this world so that all people are one in the great household of God. Show us how to live as your children, as sisters and brothers in your holy and blessed realm. In the name of your son, Jesus Christ, who will one day welcome us all home. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. For all who are gathered, let us take a moment to welcome one another with a sign of peace. For those of you online, please share a comment in the chat. Second chapter of Samuel, beginning with the seventh. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, 
the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by human beings. But I will not take my steadfast love from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth, our first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But Mary was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is a sixth month for her who is called to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, we all know people who love to talk. You know those folk? You meet them and they can run a conversation all by themselves forever and ever. Amen. We all know them. We may even be them. I know that certainly speaking for pastors and politicians, that's an occupational hazard. So we must confess that as well. But the truth is it's all too easy to get into trouble when we spend more time talking and listening. Today, as we move into our on our series of building blocks of faith, we're talking about listening to God. And one person who had to work on that was King David. Now, for David, at this point in the story, his life was good. It was great. Sure, he had made mistakes, but all that was behind him. Now he was the toast of the town. He was a toast of the nation. He is feared by his enemies and loved by those who ruled. After decades of war, King David had realized the dream of all people. Peace in our time. He had a peace on every frontier and peace at home. Now that's not bad from a, for a lad from a no-name family 
and a no-name tribe. You had to realize that David really was something that came from way left field. No one could have imagined that he, coming from his family and his background, would become what he became. But God had seen in this man the guy that was after his own heart. He was willing to be led. He was willing to have plans changed by God's plans. Here is someone God got to say, this is a guy that's after my own heart. So God took this unlikely character from left field, David, and raised him up to the heights of power. God was with him, and God gave David all his heart's desire. Anything he could want. Power, wealth, hundreds of wives, of concubines, and a name we still remember 3,000 years later. Now, of course, with all that, one could really understand the temptation David faced to get rather full of himself. But at the same time, he wanted to show his appreciation to God. And that is part of where the idea of the temple came into the picture. He wanted to make something for God. I mean, here he was living in what they considered the toast of the town, a a house made of cedar. Can you imagine living in a cedar box? I just can't even imagine what a cedar house would smell like. But they thought it was grand, and he wanted God to have something even grander. He wanted to show his appreciation. Yet, here's the problem. What need did the creator need of a temple made with human hands? Had God ever asked? No. Why should he? The earth was God's. And all that was in it. All the stars, all the planets. What could we create or build or make that compete with all that? You know, even our bodies, our senses, our intellect, our wealth are all gifts of God. So what can we give in return? I can't think of anything made with human hands, but what about the human heart? There and there alone we find the one thing that God desires. Our love, our thanks, and our time. Yesterday, my nephew invited me to a volleyball game at Duluth. Excuse me, we were at Mankato yesterday. And just to be able to sit there with his friends and be with them. Or I think of the same thing with my grandchildren. Just to be able to sit with my grandchildren and listen to them talk. That's the one gift that God craves, just to spend time with you intentionally, to be present together. That's the one thing that God wanted from King David. Sure, the temple was a nice gesture. But in the end, what is a temple or a church? Basically, these things are just tools. They're tools we built to help us express our God, love for God. And to the extent that they do that, they're a great thing. Yet we can never let the tool become an end in itself. And unfortunately, that's the temptation that every church faces, every congregation. The trick is in making sure that the building or our history in that building never becomes more important than the one for whom it was constructed. So how do we avoid that temptation? David faced? Well, a simple answer is to keep our focus on why we're really here. We're here to worship. We're here to spend time with God. To give thanks and praise. To offer God the one thing God really wants. Our heart. And in the end, that is the gift that David gave God Through all the songs he wrote for worship, that's what most of the psalms are. They're songs for worship. Through all his prayers, I think it was Martin Luther said that he who sings prays, no, he who sings prays twice. Through words and music, praising and praying to God, he gave God his heart. And Mary did much the same when she said, here I am. Let it be to me according to your word. Mary loved God enough to say, if you want me to bear your child, I'll bear your child. Here I am. 
These are gifts of love. But how do we get to that kind of love? How do we give those gifts of love? Well, the first and most important step is spend less time talking at God and more time listening to God. One of my favorite pastors and authors is a fellow named Walt Wangren. He says, you know, when we pray, there are four acts to prayer. In the first act, we talk. God listens. That's like when I talk about being there for my grandchildren and my nephews, whatever. When I'm there for them and they're talking, when I'm talking to them, they're talking to me. That's the first act, our talking. Second act is we're listening. You know what a libero is? I learned that yesterday by listening. A libero is that one person on a volleyball team that wears a different shirt, colored shirt because they're a specialist in defense. We listen. We learn by listening to God. The question is, how do we listen to God? We know how we talk. We know God listens. But then God talks to us. How does that happen? That takes me to another one of my favorite pastors, a guy by the name of Nicky Gumbel, who is a church at Holy Brompton Anglican Church in England. And he wrote something about our listening to God. He said, God guides us in five ways. The first way that God guides us is through the scriptures. When we ask, how should we live, how do we find out? Well, we read God's word, we listen to God's word. And I want to suggest there are two ways of doing that. One way is just soaking ourselves in God's word, and I suggest something like an um, online Bible where you can listen to the word while you're doing your gym or whatever. But there's also the studying of God's words. For when we hear God's word instead, that's when we find out how God wants us to live and how we can find out sometimes where there's tricky situations. And we're saying, well, what does God really want me to do? You have to get into the word. And then in that, after that, we're going to have five CSs here. First one is commanding scripture. Second, second is compelling spirit. You know, have you ever had the time in your gut where you're trying to figure out what you should do? One part of you says, I want to go over here. Another part of you says, eh, maybe not. I had an odd experience once where a church hadn't even called me, but I sensed that God was calling me to that church. And I didn't like the idea. I didn't want to go because I was serving in one of the biggest churches in Canada. And it was pretty nice, to be honest. Great choir. Loved the choir. It's one thing I love about this church, too. Lots of good things. Money, like you couldn't believe. I mean, we bought a 100-bed nursing home. We built a low-income housing project. I felt that God called me to another church, and I said, Lord, I don't want to do that. And no one's asked me anyhow. Well, it's like God said, yeah, I asked you. So this is take us, takes us to the second one, the Council of the Saints. So I started going to my Christian brothers and sisters and saying, God really doesn't want me to go, does he? And they kept saying, well, maybe you should talk to the bishop about this. I went to five different brothers and sisters, and every one of them said, go talk to the bishop. I went to the bishop's office. I said, thought, he's going to think Steve's gone around the bend. This is not what's up. But instead, he listened to me for a while, and he said, okay, hang on. He picked up the phone and said, don't close the door. We just had an answer to prayer. Put the phone down. And, you know, that was just the compelling spirit. That's one of the weird times I've had that experience in my life. That's not an everyday. But that's where I wanted to go to the Council of Saints. So, God, commanding scripture, compelling spirit, Council of the Saints, and then comes in common sense. Well, Diane and I had to sit and look at our books and said, can we really afford to leave all this and go out there? 
we have to use common sense. God speaks to us through that sort of thing. The circumstances, circumstantial situations, God speaks to you that through the scripture, through the compelling spirit, through common sense, through circumstantial signs, and talking to each other. All these are ways that God speaks to us. The question then is, are we ready and willing to listen? That was a question for David. God hadn't told him to build a temple. And one part of him could say, yeah, I want to do something nice for God. And Nathan was all for it, saying, yeah, go, go, go. But God came back and said, no, that's not what I want. Not now, not yet. And David's not the one. And so God had to go, Nathan had to go to David and say, "Uh, King, you know what I said to you yesterday? Well, (laughs) but the beauty of what happened next is that David listened. David changed his plans because they were not God's plans. Are we willing to change our plans? Are we willing to listen to God? In the end, David did. In the end, Mary listened. And both of them in saying yes, once again affirm that they're giving their hearts and their love and everything to God. They didn't give God the leftovers of their lives. They gave it them all. They gave it their all. They gave themselves. And that's what they did, but the question now is, what are we going to do? You know, I don't know about you, but there are three times during the year when I kind of stop and check my location to see if I'm heading the right direction. One time is as the school year is approaching. Next time is as the new year is approaching. Third time is as summer is approaching. As we approach those times, whatever they are for you, what are we going to give God in this coming time, this year, whatever? What will our gift to the king of all creation be? I'm going to invite you to pray over that. Be a little intentional in saying, God, are we on course? Am I on course? Am I doing what you want me to be doing? Is there something you want me to be doing that I'm not doing yet? And then be open to how God might be guiding you in your prayer time. Listen. Listen to your Bible as you read it. Listen. Listen as you talk to your brothers and sisters in the faith. You know, can you imagine if we really got serious about talking to each other about how then shall we live? How does my faith impact my work? How does my faith impact my family life? How does my faith impact my budgeting of all the things I've got, time, talent, resources, all those things that we budget? Listening to commanding scripture, to the spirit, to the friends, listening to common sense. All those ways that God guides us, circumstantial situations. And then saying yes. Let it be to me according to your will. My prayer for all of us this year is that we don't re-gift God with a second hand things of our lives that we don't really need. Don't give God the leftovers of our lives. But give God the best. Give God the gift that keeps on giving, the gift of your heart. Spending time with God in your prayers. That kind of goes back to this time business and being present. I look at you three over here, the memory of a father caressing his child. I think of the joy I had when I spent time with my grandchildren. 
I think of the time that you might have spending them with your parents. And we grow to cherish those times. Well, the same way that we cherish all those special times in our lives, God cherishes you. And God says, can we spend some time? Those are the gifts that God wants. The gifts that God will cherish. And from them, all the rest will follow. Amen. We're going to be singing another song now. Take my life that I may be. As we prepare to listen to God, we give a gift from our heart as we rejoin with Christians around the world and across all of time by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. As disciples of Christ Jesus, called to love and serve all people, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. God, who came as servant of all, grant your church the vision to see your purpose, the strength to do your will, and the love to serve others in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer architect of the universe. In your wisdom, you laid the foundations of the world. Nourish the earth with your loving care and provide for the needs of all living things. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Guardian of the weak, transform the powerful of the world into self-giving servants, that justice and peace may prevail over tyranny and oppression. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Refuge of the weary, deliver those who are wounded, oppressed, sick, or suffering. We especially pray for the family of Bob Olson, the death of his mother, and Eva, who is preparing for surgery. Answer the prayers of all who call upon you and uphold them in your loving hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Spirit of the living Christ, stir up in this congregation a spirit of humble servanthood and strengthen our commitment to help those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and righteous one, you are the source of salvation for all who believe in you. We rejoice in the lives of your faithful servants who now share in the eternal joy you have prepared for all your saints. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. Hear our prayers, faithful God, and renew us by your spirit that we <coughs> may joyfully love and serve you and one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us now from the time and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Amen. Remember we believe in this bread of life, in this cup poured out. And together now receive the truth of Christ in his saving love. We remember. Jesus bread of hope, words become flesh, manna from heaven, we receive you now, saved by your sacrifice, we, we give you hope. of joy, drink for the world, for taste of heaven, we receive you now, saved by your sacrifice, we give you honors, we remember we believe in this bread of life, in this cup poured out. Together now we see the truth of Christ in his saving love. We remember, we believe. Jesus' word of life spoken to save, love freely given. We receive you now, filling our every need. You give us your life. We remember we believe in this bread of life, in this cup poured out. And together now we see the truth of Christ in his saving love. We remember. truth of Christ and his saving love, we remember, we believe. And now may the Lord
Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
You've done for me. Wow. 